Hey, what's up? My name is J.M. Chaley and welcome to my channel. This week, I want to talk about genres. Oh, no, no, hold on, hold on. I know there's a million videos out there on book genres. You know genres, of course you know genres. If you're a writer, you know what genre your book is in. If you're a reader, you know what genres you like. You walk into a bookstore and you go to the section of the genre that you like to read, and then you pick a book from that section and then you're good to go, right? Okay, bye. Okay, okay, hold on. What I wanna talk about is publishing industry genres. These are a little bit different than what you may be familiar with. Now, this is for traditional publishing. If you're self-publishing and you're writing in the genre that you're writing in and you tell your, you market it how you want to market it and you sell it to who you want to sell it to and off you go. But if you're pitching your book to a query agent, they're going to want to know what genre your book is in and you need to communicate that in the language that they use. And these are marketing terms, these are industry terms, these are publishing terms for genres. And they may not line up with the genres in the bookstore. So what does that mean? Well, your bookstore doesn't have a section called upmarket. Your bookstore doesn't have a section called commercial or Women's fiction. Well, they might have a section called women's fiction, but they probably wouldn't have upmarket women's fiction, speculative fiction, magical realism, right? All these kind of terms are terms that you may need to see or know if they apply to your book. This video is a deeper dive into the querying video I did a little while ago. And it talks mostly about picking the genre, of course. Now, on that video, I talked about going through these online querying forms that query agents want you to fill out if you're submitting your book to them. And in these forms, there's a drop-down menu where you need to pick the genre that your book belongs to. And a lot of the genres that are listed are not quite intuitive. And I wanted to do this video to talk about these kind of terms that we might not be familiar with. I certainly wasn't familiar with them when I started filling out these forms and I had to wonder, does my book match any of these genres? Am I picking the wrong genre for my own book? So I had to do a little research. Now a lot of these are self-explanatory. We know rom-com, romance, mystery, thriller, science fiction, fantasy, horror, right? We know all of these, urban fantasy. But it's these other, I'll call them new ones, that I wanted to dig into. First genre I want to cover is commercial. Commercial you're going to see a lot of, especially in terms of commercial fiction. And it could be appended to all different kinds of things. You could have commercial mystery, commercial women's fiction. You could have commercial in adult books, YA books middle grade, what have you. All commercial means is that it's popular in its own genre. It means, it means that if you go to a section in a book and you pick out a sci-fi book and you flip through it and it's very science fiction-y and there's lasers and spaceships and super intelligent computers or robots or whatever floats your boat, you're not going to be surprised. That's what you expect. It's commercial science fiction and that's exactly what you came here for. And all that means is it's your typical book of that genre. Which brings me to literary fiction. Literary fiction is kind of the opposite of commercial, in which literary fiction is more of a work of art. It's more of a body of work represented for its message or its depiction. The stuff that really gets you thinking, the stuff that gets into your soul and asks the big questions. The stuff that's meant to be more about a thought or an idea rather than a story. Not to say that there isn't a story. In fact, it does focus on strong storytelling. It's just it doesn't conform to the typical genres that you think of when you're talking about storytelling. It doesn't really conform to romance or thriller or mystery. It breaks those boundaries down. It is what it is. It's a literary work. It has a story to tell. It tells it and it leaves you with a feeling. Speaking of tearing things down or smushing things, how about smushing that like? That's a horrible segue. Oh my god. 
Did I write this? Jesus. Smush that like button and please subscribe. It helps me out so much and it helps me reach other people and grow my channel so that I can reach other people. I really appreciate it. Upmarket is another genre that kind of blends commercial fiction and literary fiction together. So you've got the strong, wordsy, artsy kind of works of uh, literature combined with the hooks and the mainstays of a typical genre. So you've got a classic genre like mystery or science fiction or whatever, but you've got the literary beauty of, of the literary, I just used that word twice, fiction together. Jodi Picoult operates in this space, if you're familiar with her work. She writes a story, it definitely fits into a genre, but it is definitely thought-provoking and leaves you kind of in that artsy kind of place where you're thinking. It's a philosophical kind of message that she has or a, a life lesson that she leaves you with. Speculative fiction is somewhat of a broad category, but it typically will blend elements of sci-fi and fantasy and sometimes history together to create some sort of alternate reality that takes place on Earth. Maybe it's supernatural. Here is the world where vampires exist, right? True Blood might have been a good example of the Sookie Stackhouse books where it's a regular world, but there's vampires in it. And here's how society works with that kind of stuff. That could be considered speculative fiction. Uh, it could also be considered urban fantasy. Uh, that's why it kind of gets a little fuzzy, some of these definitions, right? Um, it really depends on how you want to pitch or market your book. A idea for a book that maybe the Roman Empire never fell and we're living in modern times where the Roman Empire still exists, however big that it may be, um, that could be speculative fiction. This genre was sometimes considered like ahistorical or a blend or an offshoot of historical fiction, but speculative fiction is kind of like a what if, if you ask a question of like, what if the world was like this, but this happened, or this exists, or insert supernatural thing, or insert sci-fi thing, or aliens, or whatever, pod people. Magical realism, you'll see this one a lot, and a lot of agents that I saw while I was querying, or I still am querying when I started querying, is a, a lot of agents are looking for magical realism. And I thought, oh, I know what this is. This is the real world with magic, right? It's like Harry Potter would be, or the Dresden Files, like all this kind of stuff. Nope, that's not what it is. Magical realism is sort of surreal. It's it's the idea that the world is exactly the way it is, but there's something a little off. And the reader doesn't really know if it's meant to be off, if they're really seeing this the way that it's being portrayed, or if, they're, if it really is that way, or are they, are they really dealing with like a, a speculative fiction? Is this, is this an alternate world where a fish can talk, for example? The, the reader's probably thinking, am I the only one crazy? The fish is talking and nobody's reacting to this. Um, you could argue maybe that Seth MacFarlane does a lot of magical realism because he has, you know, Brian, the talking dog. Nobody seems to react to the fact that this dog is talking, even though all the other dogs in the universe are just regular dogs. Brian walks upright, he drives, he speaks, uh, he dates, right? Um, I think American Dad has a talking fish, The Cleveland Show has bears that talk, right? Nobody reacts to this stuff. Nobody thinks it's weird. That's the kind of stuff that you'd see in magical realism where there's just some weird thing and it's just part of the landscape. Oh, there's a guy that comes into the work every day and I sit beside him in my cube. He happens to be an aardvark, but uh, yeah, it's just Joe. I mean, you know, no, no one really knows. We go out for beers afterwards, you know. Women's fiction. When I originally saw this genre, I thought, oh, this was any fictional story that is um, meant to be marketed to or appeal to a female demographic. No. Actually, the Romance Writers of America defines this genre as a story about a woman on the brink of a personal change, a big life change, or growth. Some of these can be serious struggles like health issues, going through a divorce, 
uh, huge problems at work, legal issues, what have you. And it could have a romantic arc. It could be a romance book. Don't assume that women's fiction has to be romance because in the case of women's fiction, the primary focus is the, the main character, the woman, is going through this personal crisis, this personal struggle. She's on the brink of some kind of breakthrough, right? Um, and it doesn't promise a happy ending. In the case of women's fiction, the endings are usually more realistic and life-affirming. So that about wraps it up. Industry genres. I did not know what half of these were when I started querying, and it really uh, made me pause in my querying process to look all these up and see if any of them matched my book. They did not, but maybe they would for you. If you are querying, if you're going traditionally published, you should definitely take a look at these genres, see if they line up with what you've written, and look up these definitions for yourself. These are my best approximations. It's really hard to nail down a really concise definition of some of these things. I had a hard time quantifying how to explain literary fiction, magical realism. Um, some of these things are, are really conceptual and you know, I did my best to kind of sum them up in this video, but definitely if you're not sure, uh, do your own read up on it, your own research so that you're comfortable with the definition as you understand it. Uh, I may not have done the best. A lot of these things are very nebulous and conceptual to me, but I wanted to do this video to at least make you aware that these terms existed and you needed to know about them if you were going traditionally published. So that about wraps it up. Did I say that already? If you like this video, please give it a like, smush that like button, and as always, please subscribe. I post most Thursdays and you can post, you can post, and you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can also check out the first chapter of the book that I'm querying for, A Flower in Hell, on jmchaley.com. Check back on this channel. I've got lots of stuff going on. More short stories, a Kindle Vela series in the works. Let's stay in touch. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.